new videos every day. Life, wisdom. There are a lot of people out there who claim that man is supposed to be an herbivore and not supposed to eat meat. So in this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the history of vegetarian and veganism. But I want to start by asking you what you personally eat. Are you a meat eater or do you just avoid certain kinds of meat? Are you a vegetarian or a strict raw vegan? Leave your comment, let me know what you eat, and maybe later in the video I will let you know how I eat. Making the statement that man is an herbivore is kind of like standing in the middle of a war zone and insisting that man is a peace-loving species. The fact is that most people are omnivores, and even most vegetarians still eat animal products like dairy and butter. It's estimated that only 1 in 200 people in the world are vegans, which is about a half of a percent. And that's the first point that I want to make, is that most people in the world are omnivores, about 99.5% of the population that does eat animal products. And if you are a vegetarian or vegan, then it is a bit like standing in the middle of a war zone. Likely, you're surrounded on all sides by people who eat meat. And these meat eaters are engaged in activities that are an affront to your philosophical stance and your genuine caring and empathy towards the suffering of animals. And if you do have a moral argument against eating meat and against the exploitation of animals, and if you have a genuine emotional empathy towards the treatment of animals, then both of those are great reasons to be a vegetarian. But let's look at vegetarianism from a historical perspective and see if there's any evidence behind the claim that man is biologically supposed to only eat plants. The statement that man is an herbivore is a bit of an extreme statement, because not only does it include not eating any animal meat, but it includes not eating any animal protein whatsoever. So that includes eggs, dairy, insects, and seafood. We're talking about full-blown veganism here, not just vegetarianism. But it might surprise you to learn that the word vegan wasn't even coined until 1944. And the idea that veganism is, quote, the doctrine that man should live without exploiting animals didn't originate until the 1960s. Prior to 1944, the idea of eating an exclusively plant-based or vegan diet did exist, but there isn't any evidence that a diet like that existed before 1850. The first vegan-type cookbook wasn't published until 1920. And veganism didn't become popular enough to hit the mainstream until around the 1970s. So you won't find any historical record of a purely vegan diet prior to 1850. So let's take a look at vegetarianism, which includes eating some animal products like eggs, dairy, and seafood. In the Western world, the first historical reference to a vegetarian diet was made by Pythagoras in 500 BC. And in the Eastern world, we can see that the Hindu scriptures actually prohibited eating meat, and those dated probably back to 2000 BC. But one point that I want to make here is that the reasons for vegetarianism in both of these cases had more to do with religious and philosophical concerns than health concerns. Many religions, to one degree or another, have prescribed a vegetarian lifestyle to its practitioners, and in some cases, its parishioners. Which is to say that in many cases, the priests and monks were not allowed to eat meat, but not necessarily the followers. And time and time again, the argument went something like this. Pythagoras, for instance, believed that people had souls, and animals had souls, and if you ate the animal, then you just might eat its soul. And since some Hindus believe that people can reincarnate in the form of animals, 
it's possible that Uncle Bob might reincarnate into a cow. And if you ate that cow, then you would be eating Uncle Bob. But it's okay to milk Uncle Bob and drink his milk. But what about the health argument for vegetarianism? The truth is that there really wasn't a strong health argument for vegetarianism until around the 1970s. And while there certainly were people who spoke about the benefits of a plant-based diet and the benefits of eating fruits and vegetables, we're talking specifically about the idea of exclusively eating plants or avoiding meat products. And historically, the primary reasons for being vegetarian were due to moral or spiritual reasons, or just out of pure compassion for animals. But if we want to turn the historical clock back even farther to find evidence of vegetarianism, well, we just won't find any. And if we look at prehistoric caveman paintings, we see that oftentimes they depicted animals and people holding big sticks. And while I'm sure that some vegetarian out there is going to comment that, hey, these are sticks that they used to knock fruit out of the trees and waving them around was just how they said hi to their little friends, the fact is that some of these pictures very clearly depict spears on the ends of those sticks. And if we honestly look at those caveman paintings, it's pretty clear that those people are hunting. The mummified remains of the Iceman are estimated to date back to 3300 BC. And they found, buried along with him, bows and arrows, animal pelts which made his clothes, and actually inside of his mummified tummy, they found animal meat. So we know that as much as 5,000 years ago, the Iceman was definitely consuming meat. And if you would like to go back even farther, then you would likely have to agree with the current scientific paradigm of evolution, that man evolved from apes and monkeys. So are apes herbivores? While it's clear that most apes and monkeys eat primarily a plant-based diet, all great apes are actually omnivores, and most species of monkeys are too. And while they can't cook and they lack the teeth necessary to eat large predatory animals, we do know that they will eat bugs, insects, invertebrates, larvae, lizards, and basically anything small enough to fit in their mouth. If you've ever been to the zoo, then you've likely noticed that the apes and the baboons will sit there grooming each other, picking insects, ticks, and other things out of each other's hair and eating them. Chimpanzees, which are considered the closest known relative to man, have actually been known to eat other monkeys and even eat other chimpanzees. So if man ever was an herbivore, then on the evolutionary timeline, it would have had to occur before the ape. But again, apes and monkeys mostly live on a primarily plant-based diet. And that brings me to my next point, which is that you don't find very many monkeys outside of tropical zones. Because monkeys mostly rely on the indigenous vegetation as their primary source of food, they wouldn't be able to survive somewhere that had a temperate climate. Because when it gets really extremely cold in the winter time, the monkey just wouldn't have anything to eat. Now there is one species of monkey that has evolved to live in cold climates, and that is the Japanese snow monkey. But these little guys are far from herbivores. They eat bugs, they eat fish, and like a bear, they store up extra fat over the summer so that they can survive during the winter. And this is true of any species. We find the highest concentration of herbivores in places with a tropical climate. And a similar species will adapt to become omnivorous if they live in a seasonal or temperate climate. And a species will adapt to be mostly carnivorous if they live in an arctic climate. For instance, the panda bear has adapted to survive on an herbivore diet of bamboo because it lives in a place where bamboo is available year-round. But there are other bears that survive on an omnivorous diet because they live in a more temperate climate. 
and of course polar bears that survive on almost a completely carnivorous diet because they live in an arctic climate. And man follows a similar pattern. In tropical climates where we find an abundance of fruits and vegetables, we find indigenous cultures that eat a larger amount of plant-based foods. But as we move into more temperate and seasonal environments, we find that man has a more omnivorous diet. And as we move into even colder and colder climates, we find that man survives on mostly a carnivorous diet, such as the Eskimos or the Inuits. It's man's ability to derive nutrients from animal proteins and animal flesh that has allowed man to move out of the tropical African zones and into the expanse of this vast earth. It's man's ability to survive on animal flesh that has gotten man to survive through cold winters and even through ice ages. Which brings me to my next point. Prior to 1930, all people were on a local indigenous diet, and they were only able to eat the foods that they could grow locally. So unless you lived in a tropical climate, being vegetarian year-round really wasn't even an option since you can't grow vegetables during the winter. It's really the mass transit of food and conventional farming methods that have even made it possible for people to be vegetarians and live anywhere in the world that they want to. So it's really kind of a modern luxury to be vegetarian and it's a product of the mass transportation system of food that even makes a vegetarian lifestyle possible. Now, I have no problem with people being vegan or being vegetarian. I'm somewhat of a vegetarian myself. I don't eat meat, but I do eat fish and I do eat eggs. And clearly, most people who are on a vegetarian diet are eating more healthy than people on the average American diet, for instance. And if it's because of moral or spiritual reasons that preclude you from eating meat, then by all means stick to your beliefs. But I want you to realize that there's really no historic or prehistoric or even evolutionary evidence of man ever being a strict vegan, even prior to his evolution of actually becoming human. Now, I'm in no way trying to discourage you from eating fruits and vegetables. In fact, if you know me at all, you know that I would love for you to eat more fruits and vegetables. So in a future video, I'm going to talk about the benefits of a plant-based diet and the benefits of eating plant-based foods, even if you still eat meat from time to time. One of the reason that Hindus don't eat meat is because they believe in karma. But what is karma? Is it just some silly religious or spiritual belief, or is it real? In a future video, I'm going to tell you. Now I wanna thank you for watching this video today, and I want to invite you to become a Psyche Truth Insider, where you can get all kinds of exclusive content, meal ideas, nutrition tips. So just visit our website, psychetruth.net, and leave your email to join the Psyche Truth Insiders mailing list. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.